Hey everyone, Sam McKay here from Enterprise DNA. Today I'm going to go over something quite advanced, but I, I really love talking about this kind of stuff because this is where you can start doing incredible stuff inside of Power BI. If you can understand or get a really good understanding of the big difference between row context and filter context, then you can do really advanced calculations in Power BI, but make it look like an absolute breeze to do them. Now, the example I'm going to run through here is uh, from a, uh, a workshop, uh, a workshop is actually a free workshop, um, all about detecting and showcasing outliers. Now, I'll, I'll leave a link below in the description to the full workshop if you want to run through it. But basically, the full workshop goes through from scratch how all of the calculations inside of this model were completed. And it was all about outliers. So how do you detect them? How do you showcase them really well in Power BI? And how, how you can do it dynamically? Um, and you'll see here that I'm actually clicking through uh, to different time frames, And you'll see that we're analyzing these outlier customers and various different things about the outlier customers. Now, one thing to note before I show you the key takeaway from this video uh, about how to understand um, you know, the difference in context and how, how you can uh, manipulate them to get really, really or extract a really great insight. Like extracting insights about outliers or anomalies is to me a real, it's really powerful stuff. I mean, that's where the real value comes from your analysis, right? Uh, and so this is perfect. This is this is a perfect way to showcase you know, what you can do inside of Power BI to get this type of stuff, to get this analysis. Because historically, you just you'd never be able to do this in, in Excel in any scalable way, but you can inside of Power BI. Now, what we classified, or what I classified as an outlier, just, just for this example, was if a customer in any particular quarter had sales over $10,000, right? And also had profit margins over 30%, well then we classified, or I classified them as an outlier. So look, that could be totally customized. It doesn't even matter. Um, it's more the technique post here that that, that, that I want to I want you to understand. Um, but that's basically you know what we're working with. It. That's what I classified as a as a uh, as a outlier in this particular case. Sales over 10k, profit margins over 30 percent, and that's for any quarter. Now, if we look around, and and I'm going to drill into this particular uh, insight here. What I wanted to do is through time. I wanted to see the trends for these particular, the, the breakdown of these particular subset of customers, the outlier customers and the non-outlier customers. Now where this gets a little tricky is that these numbers that we have here, you know, 10,000 and profit margins of 30%, <coughs> these are, these are, these are <coughs> numbers which are static and we, and, well, we want them to, they, they, they are actually over a quarter period, right? They're a static number that we specify as an outlier over a particular quarter. But the problem that we run into when we analyze them, say, over time, the context changes for every single day. And so we need to rework our formula so that we can actually break out these particular uh, insights or outliers or customers in this case. So I'm just going to jump over to a demo I've set up here. Now, you'll see that there is two measures here. I've had to break out two measures. One which specifies what is the outlier customer sales, and that's this bottom line here, and what we classify as the non-outlier customer sales, which is this dark maroon colored line here. Now, let's just quickly jump into the formula, and I'll show you what, what I mean here. Now, we want to calculate, so you've got to think about what we're trying to do here. We're, we're trying to compare outlier customers versus non-outlier customers. So we want to compare this grouping of customers here versus all of this grouping of customers here, but we want to do it in a different dimension. We want to show it across time, how these have trended through time, right? Now, it's not as easy as, uh, because the what is an outlier and what is a non-outlier is dynamic. You see that it, it changes over any time frame. There's no, say, static filter that we can put inside of here. We can't just go grab a dimension and filter, uh, filter this table, right? So we need to create dynamic calculations. We need to create dynamic measures based on the overall outlier uh, metrics that we have, $10,000 and 30%. And so... Uh, this is the formula, this is the key takeaway, and this is where the um, evaluation of or understanding row and field context is so, so key. Now, 
this is all this is doing so just to get this out of the way is this is calculating this is saying what is in what is the the 10,000 and the 30 percent it's doing nothing more than that so once you understand that you don't need to think about it anymore but basically what we're trying to do is we want to calculate total sales right because you think that in, over date this time frame we are calculating total sales uh, on any particular day but we only want to calculate it for the customers who over the quarter breach these two um, outlier numbers that we suggest so 10,000 and 30 percent right now we can't so we're going to evaluate every single customer here but we can't just put we cannot just place total sales in here right because what will happen is at every single day this total sales will be continually re-evaluated to the total sales of that particular day right and those total sales on any day is never going to evaluate to over 10,000 and so what we need to do is we need to say, okay, um, all selected dates removes any context from the date and but retains the quarterly context. So that solves that for us. But what could also happen is that there could be a selection on locations and there could be selections on products. And we want to make sure that those don't impact this overall number as well, right? Because this overall number is being compared to the outlier sales min, which is the 10,000. And this number here is also being evaluated versus the quarterly number, which is 30%. And so we don't want any additional context or filters being placed on this overall number that we're comparing it to um, when we're making the comparison to the, um, to the outlier or, um, or trigger number that's, that, we, that we have you know, arbitrarily implemented to suggest they're an outlier or they're a, an abnormal customer. And so that's what inside of Calculate, all of these all statements enable us to do. And that is the key takeaway, right? Now, let's see how this works in practice. You've got to remember that this, we want this number to be a quarterly number, not to be broken down by any of these selections, like any selection that can come from dates, which is on a model, locations, products, etc. Same with profit margins. Because we want to break out the overall customer. We want to, we want to, we want to create some context of our customers based on the overall number comparison, not individual day, um, or, 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 or not impacted by any other selection that might occur. So let's just jump back to here, I'll see what, see what, you'll see what I mean. So if we select something within the dates, right, it's gonna always recalibrate, and this, uh, this line here, this, this dark red line here, is always just going to be this subset of customers in here. Now if we select by Florida, that is not also going to impact the overall number, right? It's only going to impact the daily number. So we're still evaluating in this particular example. We're still evaluating if this is this total sales is above the ten thousand and this profit margin is above the thirty percent over the entire quarter, regardless, regardless of what uh, filter is being placed here. But we are still only returning the total sales based on the selection. So, so powerful, right? So, so powerful what you can achieve when you um, really dive into how you can manipulate the context of a particular calculation inside a calculator. So, what I'll do, I'll round up there because it's gone on a little bit longer than I thought, but there's a lot to, there's a lot to take in there, right? Um, but uh, you, but if you can understand it, that's I guess the, 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 one of the main things that I want to suggest. If you can understand what we're doing here and what, what I was explaining, you can do so much in Power BI. It's absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. The great analysis that you could do. Now, a per perfect, I just, just thinking aloud here, you know, a perfect way to utilize this would be, say, in a factory floor, right? You, you would want to, over time, evaluate well, um, what are, what are, what are products that are um, you know, that we we're happy to send out to um, to our customers versus ones that are defective. Well, here you can see you you could evaluate. You know, this could be um, you know products on a on a on a you know, factory floor. You could evaluate. Okay, well, what is the trend of our anomaly products versus our products that are fine, and then go out the door. And so, really great ways that you can apply the same technique uh, to 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 different scenarios. And that's why I decided to run an entire workshop on it, um, because I thought there was just so much value in terms of um, what you could learn. And look, there was there was far more other things that I covered uh, in terms of how you can implement this 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 type of analysis as well. So that's why I'm going to leave a link below 
uh, in the description to that full workshop because I think you would really benefit from it. If you found this this particular um, insight interesting or this technique interesting, you will really find that entire workshop interesting as well. Okay, so all this, what I'll do, I'll wrap things up. Hopefully you learned a lot. And if you did, certainly throw the video a like, really appreciate it. And uh, and certainly subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Plenty to learn about uh, Power BI now uh, from historic videos and many, many, many future videos coming out soon. All the best. Talk to you soon.